you know, I think it's time to get this part of the cage work done. Welcome back guys. This is a quick recap of parts one and two, where I showed you the steps that I used to put together a halo style cage using all rolled tubes. Part two, I went ahead and pulled everything out, welded it up. Welcome back to the garage guys. I'm Damien and this is the Binder Builder. In this video, we're finally gonna finish up that halo upper structure of the cage. That means capping off what needs to be capped off, adding bracing, final welding, test fitting, as well as some paint to make sure things don't rust as we focus on, I don't know, the rest of the bug. But first, all right, it's so a quick question. Should I have a bar, is it better to put the bar straight forward in the middle or have it V out to the ends? What are you guys thoughts? My thought is the V so that it ties in no dead tubes type sort of thing down to the down tubes to the floor. And then I could also take and V them back towards the back corners as well. And then that way it just kind of spreads the whole load up. The first thing I wanted to tackle was the capping off of the halo where it meets the rear firewall. Originally I was going to land the tube fully on the angle iron. But in order to get the cage as tight to the roof as possible, I went ahead and spaced it up, which required me to build these little semicircles, fill the small openings left behind. I fixed this by cutting some, uh, cutting the semicircles out of some eighth-inch plate with my grinder. We'll weld them in later. Have to clean up the garage a little because let's just be honest, doing a lot of fab work makes a mess. I broke out the flap wheel and cleaned up some of the welds on the halo. Nothing too major, I just wanted to bust down a few small spots and take off any spatter. Then I put some primer on it to keep it from rust. Nights are so humid. One morning I actually found puddles in my pan. After that, it's time to break out a new tool. I'll make a video on the whole story behind this later, but for now, it's about time this shop or garage had a standing drill press. This is a Harbor Freight unit, not the cheapest one they have by far, but definitely not the most expensive either. Kind of a happy metal. Putting it together is pretty easy. I did run into a few small problems that I'll cover in the video I'll make for it, but all in all, it came together nicely. I will say that the chuck and arbor are held together by nothing more than interference between two tapers. One trick I learned way back when, I can't even remember where, but if you chill the inside piece by putting it in the freezer and put the outside piece, being the chuck, into an oven on low when you put them together, as the inside piece will expand and the outside piece will contract as they warm up and cool down respectively. I'm not sure if that actually works, but I did it here just in case. Then you apply pressure and push everything together. I did also pick up a tubing notcher from Harbor Freight. While there are much better tubing notchers available, I would absolutely love an end mill notcher. Those things are freaking awesome. This one was only about 50 bucks and money is tight right now. Besides, this will help me cope the tubes for the cage. And while I'll be fine tuning things with the grinder still, this will be a welcome starting point. But once put together, I slid the drill press into its new home. Then I started working on the halo again. Here I'm just measuring things out, but I did decide to ditch the front to back bar and opted for just the diagonal bars. The original thought was to do them both, but with the small size of the halo, I don't believe it's needed. Plus, I wanted the extra headroom. Before taking out the halo, I actually did check what each tube needed as far as bends and things. Here I'm matching the bar to the test piece I made while the halo was, st was still in the bug. Here are the two bars mocked up. I'm marking the length and then we'll cope them to fit. Meeting in the middle, 
of the B-pillar crossbar. Having used sandable primer, I took the paint off the halo where the tubes are going to weld in. Remeasured and marked center. After coping them in the notcher, I used the grinder to complete the copes and then welded them in. Ensuring that they were symmetrical. I also welded the caps on the back legs at this point too. And welded everything in completely. Not too bad on the welds, but I'll get better as the build goes on. Next it was time to do the diagonals between the B pillar crossbar and the C pillar crossbar. I could have just simply landed the tubes in the corners like I did the A pillar, but instead I decided to keep the diagonals in line with the front bars to make a nice clean look. This will mean some more tubes, little shorty tubes in the back to tie everything together, but I think it'll look better. And having more tubes isn't necessarily a bad thing. Once the first tube was coped and ready, I used it as a template to make the second one. While the first A pillar to B pillar tubes were quite shallow in the bends, these diagonals have the tightest bends, or about five degrees per every four inches. I was sure to make this piece long enough, not just to supply me with the piece for the B and C pillar, but also for the little shorties behind the C-pillar as well. Then everything got trimmed to length and I started coping the tubes. As you'll see, my goal is to keep the rearward tubes in line with the front ones. Some pretty interesting tube copes will be needed to make it work as one tube will be landing on two different bars. Okay guys, all right, I got something. I'm taking a break from this just to kind of show you kind of what I'm doing. All right, so as you guys saw, Went from the corner of the of the halo in the corners above the windshield on the A pillar to the middle of this. I did leave enough room in here to get a bead on both, in case some of you guys are wondering. Um, I've got this bar following tacked back here. Now I understand that this is a dead tube, so 
So what I'll be doing is, oop, oh, sorry. Ah, whoops. There we go. We'll go back like so, keeping straight in line. It will be somewhat of a dead tube here, but it's going to be hitting at such an angle. I'm hoping it'll spread the load out. Either way, um, I think it'll be strong enough. This is just tacked in place. I want to make sure I get this put in. I got this coped partially. And so that's what I'm looking at right there. Okay. Now the thing is I got to land this tube on top of this tube and that tube. Um, and that's a pain in the butt. Sorry about that. I am sweating a like a dog out here. It is a hundred degrees with a hundred percent humidity. I think that the, uh, well, up where I work, you can add about 10 degrees to the uh, temperature to get what it is in the, with the heat. So I'm sitting anywhere from, it is 100 degrees here, 99. So I'm anywhere from 105 to 109, whatever. And uh, so, oh look at that. They, okay, so these guys little pipe masters. I used to have pipe masters. I really wish I still had them. There we go. Bam! And then you just stick the things in there. Comes with a brand new Sharpie. Love that. Just in case anyone is looking, if you... These are from... I gotta say the name. I gotta read it to say it right, I'm sure. Um, Centurial? Centurial Inc.? That's C-E-N-T-U-R-I-A-L. It's in uh, Arizona. Uh oh, just dropped one. That ain't good. Let's go get it. Oh, drop two. Good grief. I think I'll just take out a couple at a time to make sure I don't lose nothing. I don't know if you could see it, but... I am literally dripping sweat off my forehead right now. Yeah, they gave me plenty. Probably this is for a pack for a two inch, but I got an inch and three quarters, so I had some extra. Only imagine. Keep them for later in case I lose some. I don't know. It's pretty tight, so I think we're doing going to be all right. All right. Ooh, dang. Presto requesto. All right. All right, so. If any of you have ever used one of these, they're actually pretty nice. Um, all you do is you figure out your angle. Uh, so, boom. So, I'm coming in like so, and then I'm gonna, what I'll do is I'll just push those in. Check underneath. Ooh, there's a couple of tight ones in there. Mm, I love it. Pushing in as much as I can. Get the reading. I mean, I could slip a tube in there, right? And see. But, or I could just hold it up and line aside it. That's what I know. And then basically, I'm just looking at the tube work. And that'll get me my cl my close enough, you know what I mean? So that's what the that's what it looks like. Once you have the basic cope shape in the pins, I slip the tube in and using a sharpie trace that cope onto the tube. Real fast, I mean, uh, make sure that this will fit the cutout I'm seeking for it to do. Okay, that looks like it'll fit. Measure twice, cut once. Or uh, <laughs> check twice, grind once, <laughs> whatever you want to call. Pick your pleasure. 
Then I cut the cope with a grinder and a cutoff. On the first cuts, I left the Sharpie marks. This will make the tube a little long, but it'll allow me to come back with sandpaper and fine tune as needed. Whoa. And that is why you have eye protection. <laughs> I'm just cutting off that thing. Now it's all about fine trimming. Looks a lot like that cope, doesn't it? Ooh, look at that. If I cut this out a little more that will slide up into that and this will slide into place locking it all right let's do it i see how this fits hopefully it'll work Gonna angle this out just a little bit more and then get it nice and tight here on that. Get nice and tight on that. And then I will trim this side to fit since that's an easier one to fit. Let's take a look. Okay, I uh, did some fine coping skills. Well, first, as you guys saw, I cut off the excess metal with a cutoff wheel. Then I finely tuned it with the sandpaper with the backing pad. So uh, some guys use flapper wheels. I use flapper wheels as well, but I also use the sandpaper with flap with a backing pad. They seem to last a little longer and cut a lot faster. Uh, so that's why I use it. So let's see what it looks like. Yeah, baby, that'll do her. All right, only thing left to do is tack this puppy into place, fully weld the one side, then put the other side in, and then fully weld that. Looking back at this, I could have got a lot better results had I been willing to position the halo better to get a more comfortable welding position. Lessons learned. Here you can see that despite not having a single straight tube in the whole halo, the bracing is lining up pretty well. I will say this, this picture right here makes me worried that I have I had put too much height in the crossbars and diagonals. I mean, they're really sticking up higher than the halo itself. Yeah, regardless, the show must go on, so I moved to the shorty pieces that will finish up the diagonal line from the A-pillar all the way back past the C. Fully welded up. Again, I should have taken more time to get the welds cleaner. Next, it was time to test fit in the bug. Okay, you'll see me struggle with this a little. Well, more than a little. I eventually called Bella over to help, but this is the exact reason why I ended up cutting apart that one piece main halo and doing this whole project in pieces. So much easier. All right. I slipped the cage in real fast, real, just to see how it lines up. It's not as high as I wanted it, but 
It's about three fingers, uh, not too bad. Uh, most areas, like around here, it's two. All the way across, here it's three, obviously. Here, where it bumped it up quite a bit, that's two, it's two and a half, two and a half, two, 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 one, one. So that's all one finger width. It's real close to the top, digging that. And then of course, one and a half, and I got to two there. And so it's pretty tight. As you can see, uh, in order to hold this up uh, while I'm putting it, everything else together in the interior, I use these little tabs, I just tack welded them. Just gonna weld them to it so that way it uh, holds uh, nice and pretty. But uh, everything else seems to be pretty nice. It goes straight across. Here's the, um, everything is, yeah, two inch, or two fingers, sorry, two inch. Then goes the three, and just like the other side. I was a little concerned that this was going to block view of the uh, rear window, but not really. That is, literally, that blue tape is right there. So it is right along that. It did cut a little bit of there and a little bit there, but I'm okay with that. I think I could live with that pretty easily. I'm gonna to try to get it a little higher, probably actually, probably not. See this, this is about a quarter inch. I wanna keep uh, a couple of thicknesses of cardboard away from the, the roof. Um, don't ask me why. Uh, why? Uh, just cause. Anyway, one finger right there in the middle. Um, kind of comes down a little bit to one and a half to two. But yeah, yeah, that worked out well. One of the things I wanted to make sure is that I hoop that up so it doesn't block the rear window. Um, now watch me put the radiator there or something stupid, but uh, at least I got good airflow. There's no bars gonna be obstructing, you know, and making me have overheating problems. No, I'm actually planning on putting the glass back in. I'd like to get some, uh, what is it, the uh, VW loose, loose bolts, uh, his pop-out windows. I'd like to see if I could get one of his, uh, his safari windows up front, but that would be super cool. Uh, but anyway, I say the results are good. I like that you can't tell that the cage is in there. Success. After removing it, I shot it with some primer and then some silver paint. And that's it, the halo is done. That took a lot longer than I anticipated it, but I'm, I'll be honest with you, I'm really happy with the results. If I could get the rest of the cage to look like that and to fit like that, I'll be very happy. Now I do have some prep to do before I actually install the halo back into the bug, but I am oh so close. Then I'll be able to start on the down tubes, you know, coming from the A pillar and the B pillar, installing the pan and everything else. Anyway, please like and subscribe. Hope this helps you with whatever you're working on and get, at least, if not anything, gives you the motivation to, to tackle the project that you're working on. But other than that, I'll see you in the next one. I'm Damien, and this is The Binder Builder.